Okay, this is the Thermonix Precision Temperature Forcing System. When you turn it on with the power switch here, it'll go through a self-testing procedure. Uh, if there's a fault, it will appear. Sometimes just resetting it, turning it off, turning it back on will reset a fault. Um, usually you don't see that. Uh, at that point, it'll go into a no-flow standby status. At that point, you're able to do whatever you want. Um, the compressor, uh, you want to go through a dry out procedure for about five to 10 minutes and then turn the compressor on. And that takes about 20 minutes to cycle and get ready to cool. Um, all your adjustments and everything is done via the front panel here. Your flow rate for heating and chilling are here. Your flow rate is visible here. The manual explains how to set that. Um, this only has local, uh, so there's no remote, so that's, that's off. When your compressor is on, the LED will light. At this point, you have the choice of operating in either a uh, manual or automatic mode. In manual mode, you would you could just go hot or cold, uh, deciding which one you want. And it'll stay in that position for until you either go back to ambient or to the other uh, alternative. Here you have your cycle and soak settings. Uh, this cycle, uh, once when you go through the menu to set up your parameters, you tell it uh, the different cycle parameters, etc., and your soak time. I have it ready to go into cycle mode. Uh, it's going to go down to minus 55 and then cycle, sit there for 10 seconds and cycle up to 125 degrees. So to initiate the cycle sequence, once you've uh, got it all programmed, just hit cycle. The cycle light comes on, it'll go down to the cold, and the set point here is minus 55, and you can watch the actual here. Once it reaches that and stabilizes within one degree, the soak light will come on. It will soak, as I set it for 10 seconds. When that soak light goes off, it'll move to the hot. And now it's heating up to 125 degrees here. And again, once it reaches that, it'll go into soak time for that. And I've got it set for a continuous cycle. So what it will do is now cycle right back to the cold, go down to minus 55. And it will do this continuously uh, until I tell it to stop. I'm going to force it to stop by hitting the cycle. And you can see that it goes back into the ambient mode. And that's the basic operation uh, of the front panel. And you can see it says no flow and the set points that are currently in the system. Uh, you can store up to 10 different uh, cycles and into the memory if you want to. The boom controls are here. You have your boom up and your boom down here. There's also different joints that are on the arm and those are compression locks uh, so I'm going to lift the head up with the release so when you have this set you can automatically go up and down. And to do that you have to press both of these buttons at the same time. And as you can see it lifts up, push it again, and it goes down. When it's in the up position, you can, as an example of they all work the same, you just unloosen this and you are able to do whatever motions you need to do uh, to get this situated onto the bench top there with the height and everything that you're working at. Up, lift the uh, entire boom straight up. And conversely, the red button is down, does exactly the same thing. We go around to the back.
your post uh, which delivers uh, everything is, is all plugged in here. It will stay remain plugged in. Uh, cooling fan, your purge gas uh, normally set to about 20 psi, and your input air here, and your power is input here. You can see it's 220 volts AC, it's 15 amps, and the main circuit breaker for the system is located here. The air supply should be uh, about 8200 psi.